In today's super special presentation, we are going to be discussing Seth Jackson and updated information on all the key players. I promise you don't want to miss any of it and make sure you stay tuned until the end for a very special presentation in honor of Seth Jackson. A lot of you want to know, did Charlie Ely have a baby and how did she get out of her life sentence? Is Mike Bargo on death row? What was the stepdad sentence? We're going to talk about all those things and so much more, including the lead detective being arrested for kidnapping and strangulation. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a wild one. Without further ado, let's just jump right into this episode and see what I have to say for myself this time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crime Circus. My name is Drip Drop, and I'll be your host as always. You know the routine, we're just gonna jump right in and start this video with a BOOM! I was in the very first episode in this series, so it's only right that I'm in the last episode of this series. I know a lot of you out there missed me, and I missed you too. I love being at Crime Circus, and I love when you visit Crime Circus, so thank you. Anyways, back to the BOOM. The first episode in this series was on Charlie Ely. First and foremost, I know you all want to know, was she pregnant and did she have a baby in prison? Some people wondered, was Mike Bargo the father? Was Kyle Hooper the father? How about Justin Soto? Some of you crazed viewers out there even claimed you were the father. Well, the truth is, Charlie wasn't pregnant. No. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Charlie was not pregnant. No. So no, she didn't have a baby in jail. Charlie's sentence in this case was life in prison. But somebody out there in the free world loved her very much. So they hired Jose Baez. For those of you that aren't familiar, Jose Baez is the same attorney that represented Casey Anthony, as well as Aaron Hernandez. Casey Anthony was the one that allegedly killed her own daughter. Aaron Hernandez was the famous football player from the New England Patriots. And Jose Baez got them both acquitted from their first degree passing away charges. And Jose Baez was almost the attorney for Mandy Jackson. If you haven't seen that series, it's a special one. I'll leave the link down below. Anyways, Jose Baez appealed her conviction and it took nine long years, but she was released. She was released on the grounds that she had ineffective counsel during her trial. And there's a little something else to this that I believe played a key part, but we're going to talk about that later on because it involves the detective. Detective Donald Bowie. Appeals are not easy to win in this world, and once you enter the cage, it's almost impossible to leave that cage alive. But Charlie Ely is in the free world now. It's been rumored that she's on OnlyFans making a killing. But that's an internet rumor, and I don't believe that to be true. You can't believe 99% of the things you see or hear on the internet. Always do your own due diligence and fact check including this show right here. I try to stay as factual as possible, but you know this is a guessing show. Now let's move on to the next defendant. Amber Wright, the feisty little redhead that was the second episode in the series. She was 15 years old, Seth Jackson was her ex-boyfriend, and she was dating Mike Bargo. She was convicted and sentenced to life in prison. Four years later, her conviction was overturned because of a legal issue with her Miranda rights that weren't exactly read in the interrogation room. So Amber Wright got a second trial and she was swiftly convicted again by another jury of her peers. She was sentenced to life in prison with a chance of a sentence review after 25 years because that's what they do for juveniles that are sentenced to life in prison. Episode number three in this series is Mike Bargo, AKA Tank. He's five foot four inches tall and a real man's man. He could get any teenage girl he wanted. In fact, he was dating two teenage girls at the same time. Mike Bargo was sentenced to death. Years later, that was overturned. He was getting the life sentenced, but that was overturned and he's on death row. The state of Florida will be passing away Mike Bargo, AKA Tank. Episode four in this series is Kyle Hooper. That's Amber Wright's half brother and he's a wild redhead. He was convicted and sentenced to life. Years later, he had a sentence review. He was sentenced to life in prison with a chance that he might be able to get out after 25 years. Episode five in this series is the must see extended group confessional where all the kids are together confessing their crimes, minus Mike Bargo, he wasn't there. You don't wanna miss that episode. If you haven't seen five, check the link down below. It'll be easy to find. Episode six is Justin Soto, AKA Roach. He was the older boy hanging with the younger kids in Summerfield, Florida. By the way, 
Why do you think they call him Roach? That doesn't seem like a very cool nickname. I certainly wouldn't want to be called Roach. I prefer Drip Drop. Anyways, the Hawaiian 808 boy Roach, he was sentenced to life in prison, and he's been appealing it ever since. Episode 7 in this series is super good, you don't want to miss it. It's Amber Wright's stepdad, James. He certainly doesn't refer to Kyle as his stepson, but he refers to Amber as his daughter. Some might say he's sick, some might think that's weird. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think of that. The sentencing. So many of you out there want to know what was James, the stepdad, sentenced to. I've got that information for you right here in this video. His case dragged on for years. He was in and out of court so many times. He had many mental evaluations by many doctors because he has an alleged low IQ. He was deemed incompetent to stand trial, so the trial could not proceed. After many years, he was deemed competent to stand trial, and stepdad swiftly pled guilty. He was facing 30 years in prison for being an accessory to this crime. So what was he sentenced to? Well, this is the most interesting case I've ever covered, ladies and gentlemen. He wasn't sentenced. Yes, I've researched the court records. This is the first of its kind that I've ever seen. There was no sentence. And I'm not even talking about, well, he got zero jail time. No, there was no sentence. The court never ordered a sentence and it's been approximately five years. I don't know if there's some type of time limit. If the judge could sentence him in five or 10 or even 15 years from today, the date of this video. I do think that's a possibility. This may be some type of sick, torturous punishment they're giving this man. I don't know. They could potentially swoop him up off the streets at any time and give him a 30-year sentence in the Florida penitentiary system. He wasn't given probation. He wasn't given 30 years. He wasn't given anything. The last court date was him pleading guilty, and there was no sentence. I know, ladies and gentlemen, this barely makes sense to me, but it's the truth. Episode number eight is the stepdad again. He had been arrested two days prior with the rest of the kids. However, somehow he was able to bond out immediately. He was free for a day and a half, and like the absolute fool that he allegedly is, he came back into the sheriff's department for further questioning. So his second interrogation is two days after the previous interrogation, which also happens to be two days after he bonded out. He never violated his bond conditions, so he was able to remain free during the entire lengthy process of him going in and out of court for all of those years as an incompetent man. Episode number nine is super special because you're watching it right here, right now. And I've got a lot more information to discuss in this video, including Detective Donald Bowie, one of the lead detectives in this case. But before we get to that, I want to tell you about the House of Horrors. The House of Horrors. That was Charlie Ely's house, and I have a lengthy crime scene walkthrough video on the Crime Circus Cult. Some of you don't know, I have a second YouTube channel. It's called Crime Circus Cult. I'll leave a link down below. You don't want to miss the House of Horrors special episode. You really don't. And yes, let's talk about the coughing very briefly. I personally lowered the volume single-handedly for each and every single cough that you heard in these interrogations because I care about your ears. Nobody deserves to have full-blown coughing coming into their earbuds direct into their ear holes. So yeah, I suffered so you didn't have to. That's how much I care about my viewers here at Crime Circus. There's a lot of circus love, so thank you. Also, I don't think they had the flu and I don't think they were sick. I think they got a lot of smoke in their lungs from the burning body and a heck of a lot of bleach that burned their airways from all the scrubbing they did in that disgusting trailer. That's right, smoke from a burning body and bleach. Moving on, now we're going to have a discussion on Detective Donald Bowie. That's the black detective in this series. Now let's look at these court documents. In the year 2018, this homicide detective was arrested for false imprisonment, aka kidnapping domestic battery by strangulation, another charge of domestic battery by strangulation, battery, and assault. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to be the one to inform you. I know a lot of you out there said he was the best detective ever, but these are very serious charges. They had security cameras within their own home and Donald's own surveillance system caught him committing these crimes against his wife. I'm going to read more of this document and let's see what it says. The defendant can be seen kicking the victim with his leg and trying to slap or punch the victim but missing. 
The victim retreats into what appears to be the master bedroom, and the defendant enters shortly afterwards, and he grabs the victim by the throat slash neck area and proceeds off the camera while still holding her throat neck area. And the document carries on and it describes another event a couple years later where she's kicked in the ribs and strangled again. I'm going to leave the link to this PDF downloadable to my Patreons and members so you can read every single dirty detail. I'm going to read a little bit more from this document and then we're going to move on. The victim stated she got out of the bed and tried to get away from the defendant and captured her in the hall, shoving her to the ground. The victim stated that while she was on the ground, the defendant used his hands to choke until she passed out. The victim advised that once she regained consciousness, the defendant was standing away from her. The victim stated that on multiple occasions her life was in jeopardy from the defendant. The victim has expressed an abundant concern for her safety. There is a well-founded fear for the safety of the victim due to the defendant's actions and the training and experience he has from his career. Also revealed in that document, it said that the abuse dated back to 2010. So apparently he was abusing his wife before, during, and even after the Seth Jackson investigation. That poor woman. Nobody deserves any physical or psychological abuse. If you're in danger, run. Do not stay with an abusive partner. It will not end well. I'm telling you this because I care about you. I know somebody watching this right now needs to hear this. There's brighter days ahead. It's going to be scary, but you must get out of the situation you're in. Anyways, Homicide Detective Donald Bowie was supposed to be held on no bond. Also, in Florida, they have a very strict no bond whatsoever for the first 24 hours for domestic violence cases. However, according to the court records, he somehow bonded out immediately after being arrested. Sounds like special privilege, but what do I know? I'm just reading these court documents here. He ended up pleading guilty. He certainly couldn't plead not guilty because it was all caught on camera. He's now a convicted felon. He can never own a firearm ever again. And he can never work for law enforcement ever again either. He was sentenced to six years felony probation and he had to take about nine months worth of anger management classes. He currently has one year left on his probation term and he never spent a single day in jail for these horrible crimes that were basically attempted murder. People pass away from being choked every single day. And how can you kick a woman in the ribs when she's down? That's just downright nasty. Anyways, please consider signing up for my Patreon. It really helps me make this show. All the support I get is super appreciated, and I'm forever thankful for your support. I'm going to leave a bunch of links down in the pinned comment as well as the description. Please take a look through, click some links. Thank you. Now in memory and honor of Seth Jackson, RIP, we're going to end this video with some footage from the Gander Mountain Rock Quarry. This is where Seth Jackson's ashes were thrown into the water. Let's check it out. You can see it's a really scenic place, some beautiful scenery, might be the type of place you bring a lover, might be the type of place you bring a girl or boy for the first kiss on your first date, might be a place you go and watch some wildlife, you might even feel like taking a little skinny dip in the water. Leave me a comment down below if you've ever skinny dipped, and if you have, make sure you share all the dirty deeds because you're at Crime Circus and I want to know the deeds. Well, that's about it for this episode, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't seen the rest of this series, make sure you go watch it. If you've already watched it, watch it again. And until next time, remember to stay safe out there because you know it's a dangerous world.